Hello everybody. In this video, we will be discussing the vascular and cellular events of inflammation using an animation. So, before we go into what are these events, first, what is inflammation? So, inflammation is a tissue response by any vascularized tissue to either infection or some damage which brings a set of cells that which belong to your defense mechanism of your body from the circulation to the site of injury so that it can eliminate the offending agent. It is a very complex reaction and it may be a response to physical, chemical, uh, infectious agents or immunological agents. Usually we get confused with the terms infection and inflammation. However, these are not synonyms. In infection, there is inflammation. However, Inflammation does not itself by per se mean infection. Inflammation is seen even during healing. So there are usually two types of inflammation that is acute and chronic. So as the name indicates acute means there is a rapid onset. Usually it occurs within minutes of the event whereas chronic may follow an acute inflammation or maybe to a much milder um, infection or there are certain organisms which elicit a chronic inflammatory response. Commonly there is edema predominating in acute inflammation, redness and edema whereas fibrosis and tissue destruction are more common features of chronic inflammation. The most commonly involved inflammatory cell in acute inflammation is neutrophil whereas lymphocyte is the most common inflammatory cell that is seen in chronic inflammation. Along with that, there can even be granulomatous reactions in chronic inflammation. So, what are the signs of inflammation? So, these are described as the cardinal signs of inflammation. So, both acute and chronic usually will show these cardinal signs. That is redness, also known as roba, heat over the lesion, known as calla, swelling because of edema, known as tumor, pain, known as dola and later on the fifth sign was added that is functional ASA which is seen in few conditions where there is loss of function. So coming to acute inflammation. So any acute inflammatory response you can characterize the events as vascular changes and cellular changes. So coming to vascular changes. So normally in a blood vessel, you will see the cells and the proteins being in the center and the plasma is inside the vessel and it does not move out either because of the oncotic pressure exerted by these plasma proteins or the hydrostatic pressure exerted from outside. So normally as there is a balance, it maintains the fluid in the intravascular space. So what happens when there is acute inflammation? So you will see that this is the normal flow of blood where the proteins and the neutrophils are in the central axial column. Whenever there is acute inflammation, the first mediator that gets triggered is histamine. So histamine gets released and histamine is known to cause relaxation of the vascular smooth muscles resulting in vasodilatation. So because of this you will see the redness and the swelling. So initially the redness is mainly because of vasodilatation. So what will happen if there is vasodilatation? There will be slowing down of the blood. So there is vascular stasis and this may lead to the congestion. So you will see that more RBCs because of slow movement of blood more amount of cells are seen in the particular blood vessels giving rise to the reddish discoloration of the overlying skin. This response is usually a transient response and is seen within the first 15 to 30 minutes. So what will happen? This will begin with contraction of the endothelial cells. So once the endo endothelial cells contract, there will be a gap that is an intraendothelial space. So in this intraendothelial space, both the plasma proteins and the neutrophils will be able to come out, giving rise to movement of both of these 
from the intravascular space to the extravascular space. So you can see the neutrophils will first because of stasis come to the periphery. They will roll over the lining endothelium and they will even traverse from the intra -endo intravascular to the extravascular space. So if you want to see what happens in detail in the uh, to each of these cells will come to the cellular changes. So the blood vessel is lined by endothelium and there are plasma proteins and these inflammatory cells. These inflammatory cells in endothelium will have certain molecules. So the most important cell addition molecules are your selectins and integrins. So under selectins we have three types that is L-selectin, E-selectin and P-selectin meaning L stands for uh, selectins on leukocytes that is on the neutrophil E meaning the selectin on the endothelium and P meaning selectins that can either be on the endothelium or the platelets. So these are responsible for the addition of the WBCs to the endothelial surface. So these selectin molecules should get attached to one more molecule on the surface of the cell. So on the surface of the neutrophil, there are glycoproteins called as Sialyl Lewis glycoproteins. So these will bind to the selectins on the endothelium, giving rise to rolling over of the WBCs on the endothelium. And next, what is responsible for the firm addition of the WBCs on the endothelium are the integrins. So you will see initially the integrins will be in a low affinity state and later on once they go to a high affinity state this rolling over WBCs will firmly adhere to the surface giving rise to a pavementing like pattern over the endothelium. So you can see on the WBC surface there are Sialyl-Lewis proteins and integrins which are initially seen in the low affinity state. So because of vasodilatation, these WBCs will move from the central axial flow towards the periphery. And as they move towards the periphery, they will come close to the selectins over the endothelial surface. And you can see that the Sialyl-Lewis glycoproteins are getting attached to the selectins. It can be P or E selectins. So this will slow down the WBCs and make it roll over the endothelial surface. So you can see the WBCs are slowly rolling over. And as this happens, the integrin will get activated from its low affinity state to the high affinity state and now this integrin will bind to your intercellular addition molecules. So this will result from the, this will cause the rolling over of WBCs to go in for addition to the cell sur endothelial surface giving rise to a pavement like appearance. The WBCs will be completely lining the endothelial surface making it look like your pavement pattern. Now, this will cause release of other molecules called as your platelet endothelial cell addition molecule. These are responsible for not only addition of the WBCs to the endothelium, but it will help these WBCs to transverse the endothelial lining and go from the intravascular compartment to the extravascular compartment. So here you are seeing that once there is addition, there is endothelial contraction and now there is movement of your WBC across the transmigration across the uh, endothelial surface. So it passes in between the endothelium and the basement membrane and reaches the extravascular space. So now by chemotaxis because of the presence of chemical mediators it moves to the site of injury. So now these WBCs are moving to the site of injury. The brown rectangle here represents the microbe or the inciting event causing the acute inflammation. So what will these WBCs do? These WBCs will phagocytose the microbe and then it will give rise to formation of your phagolysosome and it will try to ingest these. So these chem chemical mediators, the chemokines are responsible for the 
WBCs to come to the event and will activate the WBCs to phagocytose and try to destroy these inciting events. So more and more WBCs that reach that place which include both your monocyte and neutrophils will start releasing cytokines such as your tumor necrosis factor and interleukins. This will further increase the rele release of selectins or the expression of selectins over the endothelial surface therefore triggering this cascade of rolling over of the WBCs, adhesion, transmigration across the vessel and reaching the site of injury. So more and more WBCs will come to the site of injury to destroy this uh, microorganism if microorganism was the inciting event. So what will happen after that? So here you can see the entire cycle of rolling, addition of pavementing, transmigration, chemotaxis and then finally phagocytosis. So what happens in phagocytosis? So phagocytosis involves several steps. One is the recognition and attachment of the organism by the cell. Next, engulfment of the organism by the inflammatory cell. And finally, killing or degradation of the microorganism. So here I am giving the example of the stimulus as a microorganism which gets phagocytosed. So the receptor on the cell surface are usually your macrophage manos receptor or macrophage scavenger receptor so this green color uh, receptor that you are seeing these are your macrophage um, manos or scavenger receptors these are lectins they usually bind to terminal manos or fucose residues as these are more common in microbes it makes it easy for these inflammatory cells to identify the microbes so here these uh, brown rectangles are the microbes. So now these will go and bind to the receptors, as your scavenger receptors. And once they bind to the receptors, this will give rise to formation of pseudopods over the plasma membrane surface. So some finger-like projections will get formed and this plasma membrane will ultimately pinch off and will give rise to formation of a intracellular vesicle called as phagosome now you can see next to the phagosome there are two other circles with bombs in them so these are suicide bags so these are your lysosomes so what your cell will do is it will bind this phagosome with the lysosome giving rise to a phagolysosome and as we all know these lysosome contains uh, lysosomal enzymes and reactive oxygen species all of which can kill a cell but the advantage here is it is releasing this into the phagolysosome in a controlled way so that these enzymes don't leak out into the cytoplasm or the nearby cellular organelles or nucleus and hence it will not cause any damage to the cell. So what happens once a phagolysosome is formed? So once a phagolysosome is formed, the it uses two mechanisms. One, it can either use enzymes lysosomal enzymes to destroy the organism or it can trigger the formation of your reactive oxygen or reactive nitrogen species. So by enzymes it will cause formation of your superoxide ions or nitrous oxide all of which will cause oxidation and damage to the microbial cell wall. So this will result in destruction of the microorganism so this is mainly by your respiratory burst so if you remember your action of reactive oxygen species it is mainly to destroy the um, in infective microorganisms but the same thing is even seen in your wound healing also so this is how in acute inflammation you will see vascular and cellular changes followed by the phagocytosis of the organisms thank you thanks for watching click subscribe and click like if you like the video